In this video, we set up the simulation control parameters and analyze the results. We would now describe the control cards and set database options to control our simulation and output. First, we will create cross-section planes within the model, which are user-defined. The location of these planes are based on where the user wants the resultant forces to be computed. The results are written to the ASCII file set force, which can be requested during the setting of database option card. We now go to the section plane option. Set the orientation of planes as YZ. The origin picking mode will be set as nodes and we go on to select a node somewhere in the middle of the tube panel and say apply if we wish to continue to select more such planes. Likewise, we select a second node. Say apply and a third node towards the rear portion of the model. Click OK. Now we can see three planes have been Alternatively, created. Alternatively, we can also create such planes that clearly cut through the elements and these are desired for better results. Now the same way we select the picking option as XYZ coordinates and specify origin such that the plane cuts through the elements. It's known that the length of the model is 500 mm and element size is 5 mm. So we select our origin as 497.500 orientation again as YZ and click OK. Now we render our FE model to wireframe mode so that we can see this plane. Now clearly see that uh, it is cutting through the elements as shown. Now set our simulation title, enter your desired name and click OK. Now this will be reflected in our model browser. We shall now set the card that will control the energy dissipation options. We go to D2H control energy. We change HGEN from 1 to 2 and SLNTEN to 2. In this card, the HGN option for uh, our class energy calculation and with equation 2, this is calculated and included in the energy balance. RWN is the Stonewall energy dissipation option and this is included in the energy balance. Similarly, the sliding interface energy is also computed whereas the Relix energy dissipation is kept to the default value. With these values, we now click OK. To decide the termination time for the simulation, we now set the control termination card. From end to Z menu, we select control termination and set the end time as 0 0.07 seconds. And press OK. We will now set the card that controls the output for ASCII files. This is the database option card. From database options, Check the GLSTAT flag. Enter 0 0.001 seconds as time interval between the outputs. GLSTAT is the global data output in terms of energies such as kinetic energy, internal, and total energy. The MATSUP flag for material energies. Scroll down for more options. Now check the no doubt flag. This is useful for plotting the nodal point data such as displacement with respect to time, velocities, accelerations, etc. The RC force output at intervals of 0 0.001 seconds required for plotting any interface forces at defined contacts. Check the RW force if the rigid wall forces are required to be plotted. The section force flag as we have defined three section planes earlier and the resultant forces will be computed at these cross sections. 
and finally SLE out flag to record the contact interface energies. Now click OK. Next, to specify the binary output files to be written, we now set the database binary option and check the D3 plot to be output at intervals of 0 0.0002 seconds. Uh, this will contain the complete output states over the three-dimensional geometry of the model. Also to control the size of the database, in database extend binary, uh, we specify only one state to be on each T3 plot file. Next in time history, we set the TH node card. This is the control in which specific node data are output to the ASCII file node out. So go to TH node, select left view for our model, and select at random a set of nodes for which we require time history data to be written in node out file. This node out file is an ASCII file and will be helpful in contributing to generation of post displacement curve, which is an important result. So these are the set of nodes that we select. Say done and select the name, say OK and then exit. Now we are done with all our parameter setting and definition. Now we save our file and in the model browser right click on simulation and say run. After creating an output directory enter a desired name for your file and save. We can now see our simulation running. So for our post processing now we need to attach our simulation results. Click on file, say attach results, browse to our output directory and select the D3 plot file as shown and say open and OK. Now uh, we go to our results deformation, click on animate, to the deformation tab display setting, check on true scaling element edge color as black and click update so now we can see the animation of our crushing behavior so with this we end our tutorial on square tube crush analysis thank you